Well, welcome back. This will be part two of the underhood uh, refresh. Last episode, we went ahead and replaced the thermostat, water pump, the upper lower hose, expansion tank, uh, new idler pulley. Found we got an issue with the uh, tensioner pulleys, so still got to figure that out. Um, so now we need to take care of the hard coolant pipes, which are under the intake. So we're going to have to pull this uh, cabin air filter housing. Uh, that's pretty easy. You get these beauty covers off. Pop uh, this corner plate off. That gives us a little bit extra room. Take the uh, DISA out. Take the air tubes off. I'll bring you along so you can kind of see what goes, goes into it. Uh, taking the intake off. It's not the hardest thing in the world, but it's not the easiest either. Uh, I think you'd probably get it done if your first time under two hours. Uh, me, I can probably do it in about an hour. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, grab some tools and we'll start wrenching away. All right, so let's get this cabin filter housing out of the way. Don't forget to order a uh, new micro filter. We're gonna have to get that going. Get the uh, cabin filter housing out of the way. It's gonna be four T27s. And I just like to crack them all. All right, got all those loose. We need to separate this uh, loom here. And we should be able to pull it right out and out. There we go. I'm gonna pull this corner piece out. Looks like someone's already been in here because that's missing a fastener. This one's falling out. Pop this brake booster hose off, this off. And then just kind of angle this out of the way. This brake booster hose is all collapsed and hard, so we'll probably order that. We're gonna have to disconnect power here as well. Um, well, let's get these beauty covers off. It's held in by four tens. Pop these little dress caps. It's missing two of them. Next, I think I'm going to pull the DISA out. There's two Torx bolts, one uh, here and one under here. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull that out. All right, should be able to pull this DISA out. Go, nice and easy. This looks like it's the original O-ring because it's actually formed in place. It's not a real O-ring. Contrary to internet belief, this pin cannot fall into the intake while it's in place. If you have a ruler, simply measure the depth. Measure the depth, then measure the depth in the intake. There's nowhere for it to go. Now, this can fall out as you're pulling the disc out or putting it in. Uh, I have seen these flaps broken. Uh, the way you test this is there's a little vent hole down here. You're gonna close it, put your finger over it, and it should hold. If it moves a little, that's not a big deal. And then you open it, so we're good. The diaphragm is good. Uh, you also wanna make sure it is moving pretty good. Now we're gonna pull the intake hose off. You got a hose going to the ICV. There's just a screw clamp here. And once it's out of the way, you can get to the big um, clamp that goes around the throttle body. As I moved it, this broke off, so we'll have to order that as well, a suction pump. Uh, one of the really fun bits, but from the factory, the hose clamp is upside down. It makes it a real pain in the butt to do it uh, you know, in car. And then when we put it back together, we'll flip it around so you know, the next guy can actually get in there and turn it off or uh, undo it. So that probably means these intake boots are original. All right, so we got the intake boot off. Man, I said I could do this in about an hour. I probably spent 20 minutes just getting those two clamps off. But if that had already been taken off at one point and uh, put a way that someone can actually reach it, definitely would have just been a couple minutes pulling it off. So a couple things you want to check on these boots. We like said them being upside down. I'm pretty sure this is uh, the original. Um, so let's check it out here real quick. You want to look around this F connector, look for tears. Uh, this is actually pretty decent looking. It's actually still pretty pliable, but there we go, intake leak. On the back side, you can see here that this is uh, torn. So it's definitely an intake leak, causing lean codes, it's past the math, not good. Uh, the other area you want to check is around here. That looks good but we've got it off we're gonna replace it this one especially feels really hard 
So that's all. This might have been replaced the supper half. Uh, but we're, we'll go ahead and order up a set. Here's your ICV up here, your throttle body, where your disc goes up here. Uh, that's going to have to get replaced since that broke. Again, just the fun of dealing with something uh, that's, you know, old plastic. Next step, we're going to start taking uh, this bracketry off from this uh, electrical distribution. That will get us access to take that ICV off, take the throttle body off, and there's a mount on the underside of the uh, intake that we need to remove and then we can start taking from the top side. All right, so we got uh, this all unbuttoned here, got the bracket off the ICV, the ICV is out of the way. So when you're checking your ICV out, when you have it out, it's probably a good idea to clean it. Uh, you wanna be able to hear them rattle. If they don't, they're stuck, they can cause idle issues. We'll still go ahead and spray this out with brake clean because it is pretty gross and whatnot inside, but at least it's moving. And it didn't really seem to have idle issues. Just the lean codes, probably from that split intake boot. Now I'm um, basically got four bolts to take off uh, the throttle body. That'll be out of the way. Let's pop this throttle body off. And we're pretty close to getting this intake manifold off. All right, we got the throttle body off. Looks in pretty good shape. A little carboned up on the inside, but not real bad. We'll clean it up with some brake clean. We got pretty much everything we need off below right where my finger is there's a uh, bolt down here that we gotta undo that's the bottom support for the intake then we need to come back up top we need to disconnect this uh, power feed that goes down to the starter and it's dealer's choice what you do with the fuel rail pop the rail off the injectors um, that's generally what i do uh, there's some danger in that because you can mess up the o-rings uh, but they're cheap but if you don't have them on hand, it's a problem. Uh, but there is a quick disconnect on the back of the firewall. It's a little hard to get to, but that's an easy place to do it. So let me go ahead and get the lower uh, bolt out, and then we'll start tackling the last little bit up top. There's a bunch of 11s down in these crevices. Once this injector harness is out of the way, it's, it's really easy to see and get to. Got a little bit more progress here. Got the uh, injector harness off. See a little bit of mouse houseage in here. Uh, but other than that, everything's looking pretty good. I, no real surprises. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull that fuel rail off. I'm just gonna undo the rail and lift the injectors up out of the manifold. We're about ready to pull this off. Got the fuel rail out of the, out of the way. I got all the 11s out uh, that hold the intake manifold down. You can see we're rail free. I just need to pull it out. Oh. <laughs> The CCV line just melted in my hands as I tried to disconnect it. So, again, good thing that we're doing this. You know, it's a whole lot of while you're in there, but, you know, it's really going to set this car up to be really reliable. There we go. Got the vacuum line here from purge valve. Oh, there we got that. All right. There, finally, liberation. So you got your CCV here, this line just rotted off, this line I disconnected, here's the jet suction pump that we got to replace, this line probably is okay, we might order a piece of that, there's some vacuum line, this one I believe goes down to um, a canister for a flap on the muffler, and this is check veil for the SAP, that line is just disconnected, we'll replace all that. This cap sometimes can rot and uh, deteriorate. So that's a good idea to check it. This one feels nice and, oh no, no it's, it's splitting. So we'll order that too. Intake gaskets, they're pretty hard and dry. So I did order those, so we'll replace those. Here you can see the uh, water lines that we need to replace, these two black lines. Let's see if I can get this thing to stick somewhere. There we go. So this line and this line, and it's a little hard to see. Let me show it off a camera. You see how this is brown? That means that plastic is all aged out, needs to be replaced. Uh, here you can see some of the water. I thought this was wet uh, oil. It's actually just from that uh, coolant leaking down from there, resaturating the uh, old oil leak. But the oil filter housing gasket itself looks okay, so I don't think we're gonna mess with it. That Thanos line looks brand new. This is the CCV drain that I was talking about. This is all gummy and rubber, it's garbage. So it's a good thing we're replacing that stuff. Um, 
I'll get in there, we'll clean this up a little bit, but uh, I'm gonna call it a day. Hold this all apart, I'm pretty beat. We'll come back tomorrow, do a little bit more, clean this stuff up, put in what we have. There's a few things that I've gotta order, um, but we'll get it most of the way back together, and then we can move on to uh, doing this valve cover gasket too. All right, so we're back. It's a new day, a little cooler out. Uh, supposed to only be in the 50s today. It was near 70 yesterday, so that was really nice to work in. Uh, try to get a little bit of this work done today, see how my back is feeling. She's a little tight from leaning over this uh, engine bay all day yesterday. Uh, but I did my old man stretches, so hopefully we're good. Uh, so over here on the table, I got to set up with uh, hopefully all we're going to do today. So the main goal was to get these two plastic uh, heater pipes replace these run underneath the intake manifold go into the head and connect to some heater hoses um like i said we had to uh, remove the whole intake to get access to those so that opens the whole case of uh while you're in there's got our new ccv this is actually the cold climate package this is a actual genuine bmw part it's cheap uh, if i remember it's 45 50 bucks from fcp euro not too bad but there's also two other um, CCV lines that need to be replaced. So we picked those up as well. Uh, one from Ryan, one uh, is uh, Phoebe. Then as we put it back together, we're gonna put new intake gaskets on. Got the new uh, throttle body gasket, which I might reuse, might just keep, keep it. And we have our ICV elbow. Uh, we're gonna check that. And finally, our uh, valve cover gasket. So uh, we also do have uh, new dipstick o-ring there was another one that uh, I think the wind might have carried away so I need to find that that's for the actual dipstick this is the one that goes down into the engine block so we'll replace that as well while we're in there common leak points for both vacuum and oil leaks so first uh, job I need to move some of this stuff away I think I'm gonna clean up a little bit uh, and then we'll pull off these uh, intake tubes that are underneath uh, here as well so Get the injector harness out of our way, fuel rail out of the way. And again, you can see our, our two pipes that we're going to replace. Uh, Got to remove some zip ties. Just a couple, looks like 13 mils. Pop those out. I might have to actually disconnect this vanos line in order to get that uh, lower pipe out. That shouldn't be a, too big of a deal. And uh, like I said, we'll clean up this area for the intake to go back on clean up the engine block a little bit. I'm not pressure washing or anything like that. Just gonna kind of clean it up. If you're so inclined, this is a good time to do the starter. Uh, you don't need to pull the intake to do the starter. If you got a rear wheel drive model, you can get it, uh, you can get to it from underneath. But uh, it's a good good time to do it. Uh, it's working fine, it looks really good. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it well enough alone. Let me go ahead and get cleaning up on some of this stuff and I'll bring it back. All right, just like that, a couple minutes of uh, a wire brush and some brake clean, and got the side of the head all cleaned up, intake mating surface is all cleaned up. Now we can go ahead and pull those uh, coolant lines. Uh, they do tend to break upon removal. I mean, obviously the upper ones already is leaking, uh, but I'm expecting to have to fish some uh, pieces out. I did go ahead and move the Vanos line out of the way, it's just a 19 millimeter. Now there is a uh, crush washer on either side of that. Make sure you don't lose it and make sure they do get replaced or it will leak. Uh, that is high pressure oil. You don't want that uh, to let go and spray all, spray all over uh, losing all your engine oil. So that would be a bad day. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the upper one. You just have the 113 back here and then a 10 mil there. And the lower one has two 13s that uh, you can see one uh, there and the other one is just a little bit out of frame. You don't have to uh, pull off the knock sensors. Those are, are fine. They stay out of your way. The hoses, the rubber hoses just unclip just like the radiator hoses. Uh, we'll get those out of the way. Then we'll clean up that area uh, and prepare for reassembly. This one uh, is a little hidden down here. But that's the second 13 mil for the lower hose. Get this one out. Yep. 
All right. So here's the upper hose, or the upper pipe, I should say. And again, you kind of see how this is turning brown. That means it's all aged out uh, and breaking. And you can see here, full we'll focus. There we go. That edge is actually broken. I need to make sure that there's nothing left in there. We don't want to shove a piece of plastic into the uh, cooling system. Here, here's a good representation. So there's the old one. There's the new one. So we do have quite a bit that's broken off in there. And so obviously this is the source of our leak. Uh, we'll fish that out uh, once we get the other line out. Just gives us a little bit more wiggle room. All right, we should be able to start wiggling this out. This one probably will break off. There we go. Yep. Sure enough. Here we can see the one I just pulled out. That was broken even before I started wiggling on it. And again, you can see how much is still in there that needs to uh, be fished back out. All right, well, I apologize for the noise. The neighbors are uh, leaf blowing, uh, but we got everything out. You can see all the pieces that were still stuck in the engine uh, that had broken off with the old pipe. You see the new pipe here, got new O-rings that came with it. And then the, uh, this is the upper pipe. Uh, again, all the broken little bits. They came out pretty good, just with a little pick tool, a little patience. So we got these ready to go back in. I've cleaned as much as I'm gonna clean. I think it came out pretty good. I mean, there's still stuff in the nooks and crannies, uh, but I'm not gonna pressure wash it. Uh, and honestly, no one is ever gonna really see it. So I just kind of like getting the majority of it. That way you kind of keep track on uh, new leaks or new issues. Uh, I'm sure it would have been nice to pressure wash it and make it all perfect, but you know, it's just basically a flip car. Uh, so, and you know, if you really think about it, any shop's not even gonna go to this length. They're just gonna clean up what they have to, uh, clean their own mess possibly, and you know, make mating surfaces clean. They wouldn't have scrubbed this block. They wouldn't have cleaned it all off. So uh, I'm happy with the results. I'm gonna go ahead and get those two pipes uh, stabbed in. Just gonna lube them up again with a little silicone, get them, get them set and reconnected. Oh, we got both of them in place. Uh, got the 110 mil up there, 13 for the upper, and the 213s for lower. Both hoses reconnected. Uh, also, take pull out the dipstick. You can see there in the block where it goes. Uh, I'm going to replace that O ring. Make sure when you do uh, replace the O ring that you pull the old one out. So it didn't come with the, it didn't pull out with the dipstick tube when I pulled it. So I just went in there with a pick tool, got it out. So we got our new O-ring on there, just wipe things down, get the crumbled drain tube off, we'll replace that. Uh, I goofed and only ordered one of the dipstick O-ring, so put the new one at the top. We'll replace uh, the other one another day. They're cheap, I'll just order another one. Uh, but for now, it should be pretty decent. Locks in real nice. We're pretty much ready to start doing the CCV uh, stuff, which we'll do on the table but I wanna pound this uh, valve cover off first while we have all this room. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull all these uh, coil packs, just uh, two tens on each one, bunch of tens all the way around, and that should come right up and we'll be able to do the uh, valve cover gasket. All right, so we got all the hardware out for the coils. Start pulling them. Now we do have uh, we do have an external leak on the valve cover gasket, but they can also leak down into the uh, spark plug tubes. That can cause some misfires. Obviously, we don't want oil in and around our spark plugs, so it'll be interesting to see if we have leaks there too. So I'm gonna start pulling them out, and I do like to leave them in order. We got number one, and these all look like they're aftermarket, uh, but this one's nice and dry. Oh, that came, that tube stayed in. We'll have to get that in a second. Oh, that one's nice and dry. Oh, that one came off too. <laughs> Let's see, we better look with this one. Oh, that one's nice and dry.
and that was nice and dry. So I think we're good that way. I'll have to grab my pliers and pull those tubes out. All right, actually, I think I'm just gonna pull the valve cover off. Uh, I'll have a lot more room to kind of grab on, on those boots. The valve cover should come off just fine without it. Uh, you do have two grounding straps on either end. I actually did pull those off. They're held in by nine millimeter nuts. Uh, then you've got uh, four studs across the center, all 10 mils, then the perimeter, all 10 mils. Uh, so let me crack those off and we'll pop the valve cover. Also gives a nice little look to see the general health of the engine. Is it all full of sludge? Is it nice and clean? It does have 246,000 miles on it, so I don't expect it to be uh, crystal clear. Once we do get the cover off, we also want to look to make sure that there's no cracks. And I don't suspect any because you would see some oil pooling in and around the top or dripping down. Uh, these covers can crack and warp. Uh, so we'll keep an eye out for that. And let me crack on and we'll get that, that valve cover off. All right, got all the uh, hardware off. Should be able to pop this valve cover off. Just be mindful, you know, any lines laying around it. You don't want to get snagged. Um, there are washers on these grommets, so make sure you pull them off and just use a little magnet. You don't want those flopping around, getting inside the valve train. That, that would be a bad day. So let's see if this bad boy will come off nicely. Ooh, no, she on there, good. All right, let me, uh, let me grab a pry bar here. Go easy. There we go, that's all it took. So we don't want to crack the valve cover. We just want to get it off. That should come off pretty easy. Holy cow. Um, I am amazed. That works. Look how clean this thing is. Holy crap. This thing had really good oil changes. I mean, there's a little bit of discoloration up here, um, which is pretty normal. You know, there's not a lot of oil flow in that area, so stuff gets kind of cooked on. But holy cow, everything looks really good. Exhaust cam looks good. No big gouges in it. I just can't believe the color. Holy crap. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. It's a piece of the valve cover. So the valve cover's cracked. Let's see if we can see where that piece was. Ah, uh, down here. Or, no, that's that. <laughs> that's not valve cover guys um it feels very plasticky that is actually the gasket so these things get so hard and brittle they turn they basically plasticize so that's good news because that's where it goes over uh that's that's amazing i really thought that was a piece of plastic that no that's the uh that's the actual gasket itself. But I'm looking it over. I don't see any other problem areas. I'm trying to look and show you guys at the same time. So I think this valve cover is good. Um, I don't think this has ever been done. So I'm not seeing any RTV in uh, the half moons or on this mating surface for the timing cover to the head. That's usually... Uh, it's usually done when the valve cover gasket is replaced, but it's not done at the factory. We'll go ahead and we'll throw a little on there just to be sure that it's done. Um, but you can see this whole lower edge, how it's all wet, especially towards the back. I mean, that's just all from the valve cover leak. And you know, if this is the original, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually pop this off. Yeah, it's a BMW gasket. When I did the one on my gray uh, 330, Let's see if it'll focus. See the BMW there? When I did the one on the gray 330, it actually had a date code on it. I'll have to 
wipe this down and see if I can see the actual date code. But I'm guessing this is the original valve cover gasket. But it's, it's, you know, this stuff, this stuff just makes me laugh because you know these cars get such a bad rep. This thing has 246,000 miles on it. Uh, look how clean this valve train is. That looks brand freaking new. I can tell you for sure that the valve train on uh, the Gray 330 didn't look like that. It was much more stained. There was, uh, it was much more kind of this darker color. Not terrible, but uh, definitely wasn't taken care of like this one was. So, I mean, this is just immaculate. But again, this, you know, it's what gives these bad names. Oh my God, it's leaking oil all over the place. Well, this is the original valve cover gasket. Oh, my cool lines blew out. Yeah, they're 23 years old. They're plastic. Replace it. Uh, you know, they, they are a little more needy than, say, a Camry. But uh, it doesn't take much to maintain them. If they just fall into, you know, bad hands over the years, you know, you get into the, the third and fourth owners, and they just aren't maintained. They do what they need to do to keep them on the road and neglect other things. But I am stoked. I cannot believe how this valve train looks. Holy crap. I mean, there's not even any buildup on this, this cover over the intake cam. Now, usually there's all kinds of crud on that. And there's barely anything inside the valve cover. You know, a little bit along here, and a little bit up in here, but that's it. And I don't really recommend trying to clean this stuff out. Um, frequent oil changes, really all you need. It'll splash up there that already has detergents in there. You don't want to end up knocking some of this stuff loose and uh, setting that through your oil galleys. Uh, it just would, would be bad. I mean, yeah, it should get caught by the filter, but you just don't want that stuff uh, flowing through the engine. So I'm gonna go ahead, clean this surface up, make sure it's uh, nice and clean. Uh, you know, hit some of these spots with the scotch bright just to make sure that it's a clean surface, let it dry off so we can uh, get the new gasket to seal properly. All right, we got everything nice and clean, dry it off, about ready to put the valve cover back on. I just wanna take one more look at this. Uh, yeah, I can't believe how clean that is. Jeez. So, part of me was thinking that uh, perhaps this was, this engine was replaced at some point. Um, maybe that's why it's so clean. Maybe this is a low mileage engine, but then you take in the fact that uh, those, Hard lines were all cracked, browned out, and brittle. I forgot to look for date codes on them, uh, but I'm sure those were as old in the engine. We we'll take a look at our valve cover over here. 11 of 2000 manufacture date for this valve cover. Uh, this engine or this car build date was 12 of 2000, so that coincides with at least the valve cover is likely the original. So I don't see any reason why the rest of the engine wouldn't be. Let me take a look at our uh, gasket here. Four of 08. So it is not the original uh, gasket, but it's from 2008. <laughs> Still a pretty darn good run. Uh, and this stuff is just all plastic. I mean, it barely moves. All these end pieces are just so hard. Everything broke apart. Uh, so it definitely needed to be done. So I'm gonna go ahead, get the new gasket fit on the valve cover, then we'll go ahead and drop her back in. Do need to put some rhinos of seal in these half moon areas and on the mating surfaces, just as a precaution. All right, so we got our valve cover all set to go to go on. We got rhinos of seal in our corners and the half moons. I'm gonna use a little trick uh, I learned from M539 Restorations. Put a zip tie around the gasket so when you turn it upside down, uh, it holds it in place. Should have enough room to get over the studs. Then I should be able to snip it and uh, pull the zip tie out. So let's see how that works. So far, so good, I think. All right, let's see if we can nip these zip ties off. And just pull gently so you're not hurting that seal. So it should be fine. It's pretty hard rubber. 
it seems to be working pretty good. really good I just need to get this last one out piece by knife here all right so we got uh, that trick actually really worked pretty well um, the only issue I had was one of them that I put in was right by this SAP uh, it was tough cutting the uh, zip tie back out of place but it worked really well Got all the hardware in place. I do need to start torquing them down. Uh, these again, I don't use a torque spec. One, again, it's small hardware and uh, it's really easy to over torque it, uh, not paying attention. Sometimes you're gonna be crap in the threads. It kinda will change the torque value, cause you to uh, stamp it off. But the way this hardware is actually designed, um, you, it will only go down to a certain uh, torque anyways. It bottoms out uh, the bushing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start torquing it down. I'm gonna do an inside out circular pattern. And uh, then we can throw the coils back in. Uh, and then this part of the job is all done. All right, so we got valve cover all back together. We got all the coils back in place, uh, tightened down the valve cover, tightened down, uh, replaced this little section of three and a half mil uh, vacuum line for the SAP. We got uh, O2 sensor harnesses routed where they're supposed to be in the nice little crevices and around the valve cover coming back around. Uh, you know, it doesn't take long to put things back the way they're supposed to be. Uh, I get, you know, some people are in a rush or whatever, but it's always nice to have things looking the way that they should, uh, the way that uh, the manufacturer intended. Uh, note when you're doing these coils, remember the ground strap on both ends. Make sure you uh, get them in place. And here is the ground for uh, the uh, coil harness. We can't put that in place, so we bring the coil harness back around. Uh, but for now, just make sure the nut's back in place so you don't forget. You need those grounds or, you know, it's not gonna work. So I think our next step here is gonna be come back to this side of the motor. Uh, I'm gonna grab the intake manifold, start doing the uh, CCV on that, replacing those pieces. I'll, I'll show you. Uh, how I do that and then I think we can start putting this side of the motor back together um, all depends on how things go and how my back feels because it's starting to tighten up leaning over I should have left this thing up on the ramps uh, had a little bit more height but uh, I'll just keep stretching here and there and we'll get through it all right so here's our intake uh, this is looking from the underside I pulled off the intake manifold gasket you can see it over here Actually, it doesn't feel too bad. I mean, it's stiffer than uh, what would be new, but it's not nearly as plasticized, kind of like the uh, valve, cover gas valve cover gaskets get. Um, I did go ahead and also put in an all-new silicon line. Uh, you see the old stuff here. It's just all crumbling, falling apart. Definitely could be sources of vacuum leaks. Uh, so this long one coming off the top port here under the intake, that runs down to the little canister for the muffler flap. Um, it's pretty much just on the 330s. I think maybe some 325s have the muffler flap. Uh, so if, if you've got a 325, uh, you probably just have a cap. This other one that goes down to the check valve and uh, the solenoid here, that is for your SAP. Uh, so you've got an all new line that'll connect back to the hard line that goes around the backside of the uh, backside of the engine so here is our ccv that we're going to replace again you can see just how deteriorated that uh, drain line was um, pretty sure i have that <laughs> uh, one here um, so we need to pop the ccv off it's just held in by two uh, torques uh, there we got a line that comes around the side and comes up to the top of the intake and it has the two ports here um, and then another one that comes around to the side so you can just get these off best you can I mean if they break it's not a big deal because we're replacing them um, but other than that it's it's pretty straightforward downside to what I'm just realizing is this is this uh, suction pump is busted the new one comes with uh, the line down to the bottom of the intake and then a new F connector which is great 
problem is getting to this with the intake in place. So I think maybe if I take this bracket off and I get it mounted up, I could probably get to it. Um, Cause this line is, it's kind of hard. It's not terrible, but uh, I think it probably should get replaced. So let me go ahead and um, I guess you said I'll undo the CCV. We'll replace that and go from there. So we got our CCV off, just those two torques uh, to get them off. It's just easier to break all these lines off. They're so brittle anyway, and we're not reusing them, so it doesn't really matter. So that's all our old junk. This was on the top of the manifold, actually in this direction. We have a crossover that goes on the top. This goes down to uh, down the front of the intake manifold and connects around here. Also, if I've got the uh, intake gasket off, these things don't lose them. These are uh, little, they go in the back side of the intake runner. Uh, so you want to make sure that you don't lose those. Here we have our new CCV. So this is a, the cold weather kit. It's a little cheaper at SCP Euros. I think it's about 40 bucks, something like that. It just has a nice insulator around the CCV itself. This is the hose that goes up to your uh, intake manifold. And then this is the one that uh, loops around underneath the intake. And then you have the crossover piece that comes over, which uh, is this line. And then this line is your drain going down to uh, the dipstick tube. So I'm gonna go ahead and route this up through the intake, get it mounted up and uh, get that crossover piece in. And, and this pretty much ready to go back inside. Then it's pretty much ready to go back on the motor. The new intake gasket on, we've got our CCV in place with the cold weather kit. You don't really need it here in Atlanta, but like I said, it's a bit cheaper um, than the standard one for some reason. So that's what I went with. Um, this one I think I'll leave on. It shouldn't provide too much of a headache trying to get this, uh, this in, but you could pop it off and then just snap it back in place. The front side all set. Um, to kind of help route this one through, I did disconnect it from the CCV, then fed it down through here, clipped it back on the CCV, then connected the hoses up here. So it just makes it a little bit easier to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back on. This uh, jet suction pump that I have to order, uh, it connects down underneath this mount. It's gonna be kind of hard to get to, and I would like to replace this line. Uh, it's not terrible. It's not as bad as the upper half that's all hard and collapsed, but it may be a little bit of a pain. I did check uh, the ICV boot, and that seems really good. It's still pretty flexible. So let me go ahead and throw this manifold back on. We're going to have to be mindful. There's a port down here that I need to connect. Start probably connecting a couple of those vacuum lines as well. All right, you can see we got uh, most of everything back together. We got the uh, intake back on, uh, fuel injector rail back in, all the uh, wiring back there as well. Got a throttle body, ICV, diesel valve in. Uh, we did replace this uh, upper and lower portion of this uh, jet suction pump. Uh, it's nice, it does come with a new uh, F connector as well. It's uh, hiding, there we go. Uh, bought a new lower intake tube. I'm waiting on Amazon to bring the upper and then we can finish uh, putting this area of the engine back together. Uh, before we do that, we will smoke test it, but I wanna make sure that we have uh, the upper throttle body on so this is closed off as well. Uh, I can go ahead and we can put the uh, fan shroud and fan back in place. So we're pretty much ready to go. Like I said, I'm just waiting for that upper intake boot and we can finish this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap the uh, shroud and the uh, fan back on. Uh, hopefully Amazon will get here soon and uh, we can button this up, do a smoke test, fire it up, and we should be good to go. All right, so we got uh, that upper intake boot in uh, late last night from Amazon. Uh, it's just an A1 premium. The bottom one's dormant again from Amazon. I generally don't recommend aftermarket uh, parts but this is a quick flip um, and they seem pretty decent the rubber's nice and supple a lot, lot uh, softer than the uh, aged out cracked stuff so I think it'll be fine um, 
I got the uh, cooling system all back together. I did top it off this morning. Uh, reminder uh, on how to do it quickly and easily. You're gonna remove this uh, bleeder cap. Key on, engine off. Uh, turn the heater on to uh, the highest setting. Fan on the lowest setting. Uh, and then just start filling from the cap. And go slow. Uh, you wanna start watching for the fluid to come out of this bleeder screw. And you want uh, no bubbles. Once the bubble stop, set that. Make sure your reservoir is uh, properly filled. You don't want it overfilled, and you certainly don't want it underfilled either. Uh, this is an expansion tank, so if it's overfilled, as the coolant heats and expands, uh, it will take out the weakest link, and usually it's the overflow tank. So you don't want it overfilled. It is an expansion tank. Uh, coolant expands when it's hot. So set the level uh, before you uh, go any further. Um, I'm hoping that also should take care of our no heat situation. We were very low on coolant, so that uh, makes a lot of sense there. Uh, to check our work, uh, we didn't get to do this before I tore the intake off, uh, but we are going to go ahead and smoke test the system, make sure that we put everything back together. Uh, all new CCV, uh, valve cover gasket, uh, new silicone lines, upper and lower throttle body, boots, uh, throttle body gasket, intake gasket, uh, the suction pump for the brake booster, those are all common leak points. Uh, the only thing we didn't test or address was the um, DISA O-ring. We did test the flap to make sure that it works fine uh, and that, that worked okay. If we need to put an O-ring in it, that's not a big deal. I'll order a kit uh, from Amazon. They work pretty well. Um, apologize for all the background noise, guys. It's the weekend. Uh, spring is starting to get here. It's uh, uh, you know second week of uh, February and stuff starting already bloom we got uh some cherry blossoms popping already in the neighborhood so landscapers are out trying to clean up everybody's yard so i apologize uh, again for the noise so um, we've got our auto line pro here vent system it's very simple holds your uh, fluid uh just connect the hose down to the intake adapter uh the intake adapter i bought separately and so all we do just quick hit our button you see it light up blowing bubbles and you see here we already got smoke and we're gonna just wait and hopefully we don't see any smoke coming out of the system we're gonna smoke long enough that once I remove this oil cap we start seeing uh, smoke come out of there that tells us the whole system has been full of smoke and so far I'm not seeing anything which is good I mean I, I wouldn't expect to but we want to always check our work you know maybe a boot didn't go on right or a hose fell off um, other common vacuum leak points could be the actual valve cover itself uh, these things do crack uh, over time so they can be a leak point all right so we've been smoking here a couple minutes still not seeing any uh, signs of leakage also uh, this air distribution uh, has o-rings in it as well that can uh, be leaks. Oh, that's some pressure. I'm not seeing smoke yet. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah, I've seen some smoke. So we're we're full. I think we're gonna call that good. So just need to button up the uh, trim panels here. There's one that goes around the brake booster. Throw our dress covers on the engine. Put our cabin filter housing in. Put our air filter housing back in. And then job done, guys. Um, this was, I think I spent three days doing all of this, doing the cooling system, the belts, pulleys, uh, having the intake off, valve cover gasket. Uh, I just took my time and of course filming takes a little bit longer, you know, you gotta start, stop, all that stuff. Uh, you could easily do all of this in a weekend. Uh, you saw really no special tools other than our smoke machine here and, uh, the fan clutch tool. Uh, if you've got a manual transmission, you've got an e-fan, uh, so you don't need it, but they're only like 15 bucks on Amazon. Everything else, just normal sockets, torques, and I think there might've been a couple of Allen heads, but uh, other than that, it's, it's just easy stuff, guys. You can all do this. You know, you see these cars, don't be afraid to, to pick them up. When you saw this, this had 246,000 miles on it. Now I'll, I'll throw in a quick picture of uh, underneath the uh, valve cover again clean as can be um like i said I, i'm not so scared of 
these high mileage cars because they do take some maintenance to get there. Besides the 100 to 150,000 mile cars, uh, you know, they can get there relatively easy uh, and they're usually riddled with problems. Uh, I'm sure there's exceptions, you know, if there's well kept ones. This one did have some deferred maintenance, but I did see a history of transmission service, the control arms, uh, the tires all mashed, they're in good shape. The body, other than, uh, you know, there's a little whiskey lick here, a um, couple little scrapes. It's really nice, interior's really nice. So don't let the miles alone scare you. You know, look over the vehicle, look for all the signs. You start seeing mold and stuff growing up here, lichen down the side, mismatched tires. Uh, you know, th th those are the cars to walk away from. Uh, they've been sitting, they they've been sat for a reason. So this thing uh, is turning out to be a pretty nice car. I mean, like I said, it's not perfect. You know, some of the weather stripping is not in the best of shape. It needs a windshield cowl. I mean, there's there's things to do. It's not perfect, but for a cheap car, I don't think this is a bad buy at all. So uh, so far, how are we doing on our budget? Uh, we had a goal to get all this done for under 2,500 bucks. Uh, I still need to do the oil pan gasket, but I have the gasket and I need to do the rear diff bushing. Uh, but other than that, everything else is done. And so far I'm at about 2,200 bucks invested in this car, including the cost of the car. So, uh, you know, you, you can get a lot of uh, maintenance done for not a ton of money. And uh, these things are pretty easy to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down this, uh, Ventus smoke machine still not seeing any uh, smoke I'll button up the rest of the little bits and then we'll go out for a quick uh, test drive all right we got her all back together got the beauty covers on cabin filter uh, housing on air intake front scoop I gotta fight figure out where I put the little push pins uh, I'm sure they're on my workbench in the garage uh, but everything else is all set to go uh, so why don't we go ahead and give this thing a start I haven't had it running here in a couple weeks. Let's go ahead and start her up. I like butter. Hopefully that uh, little coolant light goes off. I'm not sure why that's still on. No engine light. No other errors. I'll have to double check. Maybe I forgot to plug that sensor in. That's probably all it is. And we still got our uh, little oil light, but we'll do that when we do the oil pan. We'll put a new level sensor in. All right, so we're out for a little drive here. Temp is coming up. I actually have heat in the cabin, which is nice. It's running silky smooth. Uh, sounds so much different than my uh, my 330Ci, but I guess that's the catless headers for you. It seems to be running pretty good. When we get back, I'll put her up on ramps. Just check that uh, cool level sensor. I'm sure that's all that is. I also want to look to see what color uh, steering rack tag this has. I'm guessing it's not the yellow tag that everyone wants. I think that's probably the main reason for the lighter steering. It could also be that it's got the LF30 power steering pump in uh, instead of the LF20, which actually is kind of an upgrade because uh, the LF20 likes to shear the pump shaft. Definitely still have the little clunk from the back. Throttle response still has a little bit of a delay Really sure what that's about. A little squirt there. Feels good. Definitely lots and lots of clumps in the back, so I'm sure that that diff bushing is pretty bad. For some reason, off stop, off idle, it just it has a little bit of a throttle lag. Probably will clear the adaptations. Well, yeah, she's driving really nice. Let's put her down a manual. She likes to hold on to that second gear start sometimes. pretty good but uh, yeah she's running really nice we're right in the middle on temp got plenty of heat in the cabin let's get her back let's put her up in the air real quick in the front just make sure that uh, make sure all it is is that little uh, level sensors unplugged I'm sure that's all it is I'm, I'm just totally chuffed with this little car I mean picked it up pretty cheap running driving 330 CI it's got some miles on it, but for 1600 bucks, I put maybe 600 into it. Uh, I 
mean, we did a lot of while you were in there. So, I mean, it, you could have just thrown on the new tensioner pulleys and the idler pulleys and new belts and just driven away. But uh, I'd like to make them right. Oh, geez. <laughs> See what I mean? There's a. Uh, my, my driveway's got a pretty good incline, and uh, you know, with the throttle delay and not moving, and then uh, against gravity, she just burned out a little bit. I'm sure my neighbors will love me for that. Let me get the rest, we'll get this thing up in the air real quick. Uh, I do smell a little oil burning off, but we did have some that was all over the exhaust manifold from that uh, valve cover leak. Uh, so I'm sure that's all it is, just burn the residue off. Well, let's get this thing up in the air and double check that cool level sensor. All right, I would say yes, that is the issue. I forgot to plug that back in. Oh, well, that's all right. Uh, we'll pop that back in. I'm just take, taking a peek. I don't see any fresh coolant leak. There's a little bit of water down here from uh, when I filled it, but it looks pretty good. So, of course, we still got really nasty oil pan. All that. I'm going to probably pressure wash this uh, before I go ahead and tackle doing that oil pan gasket. I did order one, it's here. I just really don't want to, <laughs> but uh, we might might have to uh, go ahead and do that anyway. So let me plug that in real quick and then we'll go check out the rear diff too. I got you back up in the air. Uh, I did go ahead and check the rack. It is the, the gold yellow tag rack. So it must just be the power steering pump. Uh, I'll shake the front end down again too, just to make sure. but. Uh, that we don't have any loose steering suspension components, but here's our rear diff pushing. Hoping you can see it, but it's kind of hard to get the camera in there. You can see it's all cracked around that center bolt. So she's toast, which I kind of expected. Um, you know, it's not real shocker with this kind of mileage and, you know, especially being down here in the south and with the heat, you know, the rubbers tend to perish a little quicker. So it's, it's blown out, but the poor man's way of doing this, uh, which is actually how I'm going to do it, is you take off the rear diff cover and uh, just then just press this out. Um, I think that's a lot easier, gets everything out of the way. You don't have to drop the whole diff. Everything else looking really good back here. I mean, the diff is dry. See a, maybe a little speck of fluid on the front of that, but I mean, it's barely there. Uh, you know, some sweating from over the years, but that's normal. Uh, let's see, the CV boots back here look good. Both sides, inner and outer. So, just that diff bushing, that's the only thing back here that we really need to do. God, it's so clean under here. <laughs> it's so nice working on cars from uh, the south. Uh, I'm just blown away at how much easier it is to work on this stuff. So, I'm going to get you back topside here. Alright, so, you already see that that uh, low coolant light's off. Starts up, gone. Jellyfish launchers are still gone. No uh, tamper dot on the cluster. No cog of death. No engine light. Nothing. I just this car is just so cool. I'm really going to uh, miss it when it's gone because this is such a nice example. And I've got a couple little more projects to go on this thing. So, so I'm gonna call this uh, video a wrap. She's. Uh, all the front end stuff is done except for the obviously the oil pan uh that'll be in a different video we'll probably do the oil pan and do that rear diff pushing in one video uh we still got to clean it up a little bit polish it up make it look a little shinier clean up the interior a little more i did vacuum everything but uh it does need a good uh scrub and then uh this thing's gonna be ready to go down the road i think this is gonna be a good little car for somebody everything seems to really work on it nothing crazy is has been wrong with it that we've had to fix just normal e46 stuff uh, a little bit of neglect you know on some of those gaskets and the ccv stuff like that but nothing crazy uh looks great with the new headlight covers the uh, turn signals new grills really freshens the look up so i'm gonna cut this one here appreciate you all you guys all watching if you like this uh series you know make sure to like and uh do me a favor and subscribe uh, again, it gives me a little gumption to keep doing these projects and sharing them with you. So thanks again, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.